This is the new Honda CRV, and it's a little bit like the actor Tom Hardy in the way that it's more muscular and bigger in every dimension than before to help make it more appealing to yummy mummies on the school run. Now, this is the kind of car you're probably considering if you're looking at something like a Peugeot 5008 or a Skoda Kodiak. Right, and let's start this review by talking about this car's design. And I think it's an all right looking thing. It's definitely a Japanese car, but I like this. Look, there's no fake exhaust pipes here. They are real. Are many of these cars rivals? They're not. They're just weird fake things. Now, this is a higher spec car, so you get things like the larger alloy wheels and roof bars. The lesser versions, the entry level car doesn't have the roof bars, has 17 inch alloys. Also, it doesn't have fog lights. And as with most cars these days, as you move up the range, you get more shiny bits of trim. So, yeah, all right on the outside. How about the inside? Oh my God, what has Honda? done here look at this fake wood here and here and here it is vile god i don't know what they're thinking <laughs> the rest of the design is all right though i like the fact you've got this leatherette effect here and here on the door tops as well elsewhere though quality isn't so good so it's all a bit scratchy here and here and check this out wobbly center console that's not ideal then there's the layout generally it's quite good and intuitive then there's things like this look with the gear selector in park it's harder to get to these climate control buttons they haven't thought that through now have they I do like this though look some visors nice and large so they do block out the sun when it's getting in your eyes and check this out the glasses holder also doubles as a little mirror to spy on your children to make sure they're not messing about in the back now let's continue this review by talking about the car's infotainment system because it is a real weak point. I quite like the way it's mounted, however the screen is quite small so there's a lot of bezel. It's confusing as heck to use, an absolute nightmare actually, really not very good at all. You're better off using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Yeah. This is one of the worst systems out there. Now you do get a digital driver's display, but once again, it's not very good. You can't configure it for lots of different views like you can in other cars. What I can't fault though is this car's driving position. Whether you're big or small, you'll be able to get comfy in this car. Also, I like the fact that the backrest of this isn't on a ratchet like in many others. It just moves with your back. Brilliant. So two door bins, nice and large. A 1.5 litre bottle fits in there. You've got space for a coffee cup down there. There's other storage areas there for your phone. More storage under here. And look at this, this is removable, though God only knows why. <laughs> and the glove box, that's not so good though. You do have a little bit of extra storage down here. In terms of connectivity, there's a 12 volt power socket there. And in here, you have another one and two USBs and an HDMI connection for some reason. Anyway, let's move up to the back seats. So, I like this. The rear doors open very, very wide. It makes it super easy to climb into the back. It's also gonna make it easy to put a child seat in the back here, and I like this. The Isofix covers are easy to get to. Actually, fitting a baby seat in the CRV is okay, but it depends on the baby seat. If you have a larger rear-facing seat, then you do have to push the front passenger seat quite a way forward to be able to get it in, almost to the point of it being uncomfortable. If you fit two child seats side by side, there's very little room in between them, not enough room really for an adult to sit there comfortably for any length of time. As for space for adults, look, you can see I've got absolutely loads of room. This is the seven-seater version of the CRV. And in this car, you can slide and recline the rear seats. They're fixed in the five-seater version. Generally, headroom is really good, so there's knee room. And there's pretty much a flat floor, so there's plenty of space for everyone's feet if you need to carry three in the back at once. The only problem is, is that this middle seat is a little bit of a perch and it's not that comfy. Also, while the body is quite wide, the people in the outer seats are pushed towards the side so the heads can touch the roof line a bit. It's a bit worse on this seven-seater version because this middle seat is a bit raised up. It's a bit lower in the five-seater version, FYI. We've got some decent storage down here, look. There's USB connectivity there as well, which is nice. What's not so nice though is this. There's no through loading. It's annoying, though there are a couple of cup holders there. Now then, let's move on to the back seats. So, now I don't like this. To do so, you have to fold that down and then really yank on this. No, there we go, see? <laughs> to flip this forward, which is a bit of an arse. Luckily, you can do it both ways around. Okay, so it's a little bit tight back here. Headroom isn't great, but I can just about get away with it. And it is possible to have an adult in front of you and you still sit behind in this car but foot space is really, really tight. Right, now let's check out the, the boot. See, this thing is such a far for getting in and out. 
right. I've got to put it back now so I can show you the boot space and yes faffage more faffage and you're gonna get bored i'm getting bored and the first thing i want to show you is that in seven seater guys you think oh my gosh i might be able to bear with me fit a suitcase in there look at that but no it's not possible now there are some weird quirks about this boot for instance when i fold down the seat backs go to five-seater mode, you then have this ridge here. So Honda have come up with a solution of this. You raise this section up, if I can. <laughs> Honestly, this car does my head in at times. Right, and then, why can't I do this? Am I stupid? I blame Honda's engineers. And then you raise this up. And so it kind of helps get rid of the ridge, sort of. Now, there's some underfloor storage here, but there's not much, and now it's difficult to get, and you've got this weird area here. It's not very well thought out. Then, when I fold down the middle seats, I have to lean all the way in, because there's no levers here in the back. And annoyingly, when you fold the seat back down, it can accidentally slide forward, so you end up with these big gaps where things are dropping too. Yeah, again, you don't get that with a five-seater version with its fixed chair, so, yeah. Anyway, let me explain to you how much stuff you can fit in this car's boot in its various configurations. In two-seater mode, with all the rear seats folded, you'll be able to fit in three large boxes, along with 10 small ones. You'll also be able to add one large and one small suitcase, as well as a soft bag. You can also add a set of golf clubs and a foldable pram, but only if remove that adjustable shelf. Thinner biking is, of course, easy, and you can do it with both wheels attached. In five-seat mode, there's space for one large suitcase, two small ones, a set of golf clubs, a folded pram, and a soft bag. With all seven seats in place, there really isn't that much room. All you can fit is two small suitcases and a soft bag. There's not room for anything else at all. Now then, it's time for the car wow five annoying things about this car. Well, the normal version of the CRV can tow a trailer of up to two tonnes. The hybrid can only tow one of 750 kilos. This car doesn't come with any form of low cover, which is annoying if you want to keep things out of sight in the boot. So you might have to improvise like this. And in case you're wondering, I stole this from a Hyundai Santa Fe. These optional side running boards are utterly pointless because the car's not high enough to warrant stepping up and using them. So you end up just bashing your shins on them and then getting your trousers all dirty as you get into the car. The pop-up cup holder solution, the rearmost seats, isn't that great because any sort of movement, oh no belt water everywhere. The back windows don't go all the way down, so it's a bit uncomfortable if you want to just rest your arm like that. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. The car's structure has been designed in such a way that if you have a frontal impact, it can transmit all the force of the crash to the back of the car, so that energy is dissipated of the entire vehicle. According to Honda, this is the most aerodynamic car of its kind. It has special grille which shuts when you don't need the engine cooling to reduce drag. It also has special underbody protection which smooths the airflow underneath the car as well. A special microphone fitted inside the cabin picks up the ambient noise and it feeds that into the car's noise cancelling software which then plays out an opposite sound through the speakers to try and stop any kind of droning sounds, although it doesn't seem to be able to stop me droning on. The all-wheel drive version of the CRV can send up to 60% of the engine's power to the rear wheels for faster getaways from a standing start. Also, this new version of the car is 35 millimeters higher off the ground than the old version for slightly better off-road capability. The automatic gearbox works in conjunction with the satellite navigation, so it knows when you're going to be slowing down for a junction or a bend, and it'll actually simulate changing down a gear, so you use engine braking to give a bit more stability and help save fuel. This CRV is pretty good to drive in town. You get a great view forward. These pillars are quite thin, so they don't create much of a blind spot, and you get a good view at the back window as well, so that's great when you're parking, as is the light steering. The brakes are sharp, but they're not grabby, and the automatic gearbox helps for just coasting around. The best bit, though, is the suspension. It's really, really smooth and comfortable over bumps. I like that about this car. Out on the motorway, this CRV isn't quite good enough. Now, while I like the seats and they're fairly comfortable, you do get a bit more road noise and wind noise than in similar SUVs. And that 
can be a bit tiring after a while. And then there's the engine, this 1.5 litre petrol weight combined with the automatic gearbox. So I'm gonna accelerate now from 50 miles an hour and it responds all right, but what a racket that is. <laughs> so much for the noise cancelling software. This is quite a noisy car to travel in. It's not good doing that either because then you ruin the car's fuel economy. In fact, over quite a distance, I've only averaged 26 miles per gallon out of this thing. Oh dear. Now you don't expect large SUVs such as this to put a smile on your face on a twisty road particularly, but they should be able to handle securely enough. And this does that. It's just that it does lean quite a bit in the bends and never feels as sharp as something like a Peugeot 5008. So then, what's my final verdict on the Honda CRV? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should consider the CRV. It's a decent enough family car. It's just that there's quite a few similar SUVs out there that are just better. <laughs>